What's up guys? This is Manoj Shaptani. I welcome you all on behalf of the ADPD of world. It's been a wonderful day out there and I'm sure that you guys must be enjoying your life to the fullest guys. Wonderful it is. So guys, we have already covered one video presentation in which I have already discussed with you the relevant portion with respect to theoretical parts relating to the concept of mergers and acquisitions. So whatever things I made you understand in this particular presentation, that was presentation number one, we have almost sorted with the kind of theoretical concepts that you must understand before heading towards the question part. We have already completed that and I hope that certainly you guys must have revised your topic because that is something extremely important. So are we guys all set? Are we guys all up to hear about some of the questions which have already been asked in CE final examinations? Whoa, whoa, yes. Perfect, guys. Fasten up your seatbelts. We are about to take off with the first question of the day. And this question was asked in CE final examination for November 2008 and November 2010. It says, XYZ is intending to acquire ABC Limited by merger. And the following information is available in respect of both the companies. I have prepared this tabular presentation for you guys, which has been segregated into three different columns. One with particular, second with C Limited, third with ABC Limited. The first one is about the total current earnings. For XYZ Limited, it's 2.5 million. For ABC Limited, it's 0.9 million. Next comes in number of outside next shares. For XYZ Limited, it's 0.5 million. For ABC Limited, it's 0.3 million. And apart from that, we have also been provided the market price per share. For XYZ Limited, it's 21 rupees. And for ABC Limited, that's 14 rupees. What is the present EPS of both the companies? That is number one. Number two, if the proposed merger takes place, what would be the new earning per share for XYZ Limited? Assuming the merger takes place by exchange of equity shares and the exchange ratio is based on current market prices. Clear guys? Sorted? And the third part which the examiner is asking us to do is what should be the exchange ratio if ABC Limited wants to ensure the same earnings to members as before the merger took place? Simple sorted. Because any of the company, uh, as a company, the company and its board members will definitely have this perception in their mind that uh, whatever the kind of earnings we were providing to our shareholders, our shareholders should get the same earning or more earning once the merger takes place. Everybody is rational and practical on this front. Okay, you have got something in your hand. You'll always want something which is equal to that something or something beyond that something. So that's how life goes on. And the same thing is happening in the question as well. So this was the question which is asked in November 2008 and November 2010. It's a very simple question, guys. We'll try and sort out the question here itself before heading towards the solution part. Again, the same kind of strategy. So what should be the present EPS for both the companies? Simple, guys. Total current earnings have been provided to us in the question itself. That is 2.5 million for XYZ Limited and 0.9 million for ABC Limited. That has to be divided by the number of outstanding shares, which is 0.5 million for XYZ Limited and 0.3 million for ABC Limited. So 2.5 divided by 0.5 comes out to be rupees 5 and 0.9 divided by 0.3 comes out to be 3. So the EPS for XYZ Limited is rupees 5 and EPS for ABC Limited comes out to be for rupees 3. Simple, sorted, clear cut, perfect. Now, the next thing comes in, which is if the proposed merger takes place, what would be the new EPS? Okay, and we have been provided that we need to assume that the merger is taking place by the exchange of equity shares and the exchange ratio is based on current market prices. So guys, in this particular question, we have been provided the market price per share. For XYZ Limited, it is Rs. 21 and for ABC Limited, that is 14 rupees. So what should be the Exchange ratio, simple guys, 14 divided by 21. So that simply means that for every three shares of ABC Limited, you'll get two shares of XYZ Limited because the share price of ABC is 14 and the share price of XYZ is 21. Simple guys, 14 divided by 21, 2 by 3 is the 
exchange ratio clear cut so since the number of outstanding shares for abc limited here is 0.3 that has to be multiplied by 2 divided by 3 you will get 2 million 0.2 million as the number of shares that needs to be provided to abc limited sh shareholders in consideration of its merger so the number of outstanding shares in that case will become 0.5 million plus 0.2 million which you will provide to the abc limited shareholders clear guys this will be the number of outstanding shares now if the proposed merger takes place what would be the new eps we are aware of this fact that the current earnings for xyz limited is 2.5 here it's 0.9 it comes out to be a total of 3.4 million this 3.4 million will be divided by 0.7 million which is the updated number of outstanding shares post merger and you will get your new APS in that case simple guys wonderful next comes what should be the exchange ratio if the ABC limited wants to ensure the same earnings to its member as before the merger took place so now the earning which was available to them was three rupees three per share okay we are aware of it guys 0 0.9 divided by 0 0.3 now they are basically skeptical about this fact that if in case merger is going to take place would our investors would our shareholders will be like getting the same amount of eps that is earnings after merger as well or not so what should be done it should be done in a very simple manner which is we need to get that exchange ratio in which they are going to get the same kind of eps once merger takes place as well so how do we go about the same we just need to simply go about it with this fact which is exchange ratio based on eps so the eps for abc limited was rupees 3 for xyz it was rupees 5 so now the exchange rate has to take place with this manner only 3 divided by 5 it comes out to be 0 0.6 so for every one share of abc limited you will get 0 0.6 share of xyz limited so the total number of xyz limited shares receivable by abc limited shareholder would be 0 0.6 multiplied by 3 lakh 3 lakh was the earlier amount of number of shares for abc limited so now they'll get only 1 lakh 80 thousand shares from abc limited again the total number of shares for xyz after merger it will become 5 lakh plus 1.8 lakh which comes out to be 6.8 lakhs EPS after merger will be like very simple again total earnings which was 25 lakh plus 9 lakh divided by the total number of updated shares which is now in this case 6.8 lakh and it comes out to be again rupees 5. So the total earnings after merger for ABC limited would again come out to be rupees 5 multiplied by 1.8 lakh it comes out to be 9 lakh and 9 lakh was the initial earnings of ABC limited guys. So the only thing which came to their mind was their earnings should remain the same. They are not talking about the EPS part. EPS will definitely be changing around because the number of shares will get changed. But then they were only concerned about the earnings part. The earnings should remain unchanged. So here the earnings was 9 lakh. Again here it comes out to be the same thing. This was the question which was asked in CA final examination for November 8 and May 10 as well. If I will talk about the second part which I just made you understand during the question itself so this was the figure which was i i was talking about uh, which came up with 34 lakhs which was my total amount of earnings divided by my total amount of updated shares which is 7 lakh the eps would come out to be 4.86 pretty simple question guys and uh, one of the hot shot questions which is primarily being asked in almost every ca final examination if i'll talk about something related to mergers and acquisitions this is something this kind of question is usually coming up in some different different manners okay only the figures usually get changed but then the concept always and always remains the same so mark my words guys if anything comes out from mergers and acquisitions part it will revolve something in or around this part of, of the question itself only the figures are going to change because that is something which is like very favorite kind of questions which is being asked by the c final examiners i guess you guys are clear and thorough with this one wonderful let's go ahead with the second question this question was again asked in may 2012 see final examination it says xyz is considering merger with abc limited again the details have been provided to us in the question itself particulars which is earning after taxes number of outstanding shares then market price per share earning after taxes for 
XYZ Limited is 0.4 million. For ABC, it comes out to be 0.1 million. Number of outstanding shares for XYZ is 0.2 million. For ABC, it is 0.1 million. Market price per share is 25 and 12.5. Guys, if you can just see and get the glimpse of this particular question, isn't this question very similar to the one which I just made you understand? Why? Because the kind of question or the variety of questions that is usually being asked as far as this chapter is concerned is very, very limited. Okay. And they are just asking you regarding and relevant topics, which is revolving around these kind of questions itself. So you'll get to see these questions in your examination also. So stay tuned to that. The merger will be affected by the means of a stock swap that is exchange. ABC Limited has agreed to plan under which XYZ Limited will offer the current market value of ABC Limited's shares. What is the pre-merger EPS and PE ratios of both the companies? Again, a very simple, very basic stuff. 0.4 million divided by 0.2 million, you will get the pre-merger EPS for XYZ as 2. Here, it's 1. 0.1 divided by 0.1, it comes out to be 1. So pre-merger EPS for XYZ will be 2 and for pre-merger EPS for ABC Limited, it will be 1. If I'll talk about the PE ratios of both the companies, PE ratio again a very simple stuff. What is the market price that is 25 for XYZ limited 12.5 for ABC limited divided by its earning per share P that is price that is earning. So here in this case 25 divided by 2 here in this case that will be 12.5 divided by 1. It comes out to be 12.5 that is PE ratio for XYZ limited and here also the PE ratio will remain the same that is 12.5 that is the part A simple basic clear-cut understanding guys wonderful let's go ahead with the second part which says if in case the abc limited p ratio is 8 we just calculated the same as 12.5 okay forget about it the question is itself asking you up now that if in case the abc limited's p ratio is 8 then what should be the current market price again a very basic stuff guys we have got the p ratio here okay we have got the earnings part which is 1 okay 8 multiplied by 1 in this particular scenario the current market price would come out to be 8. What is the exchange ratio? Then what will be the exchange ratio if in case you're getting 8 here? Okay. What will be the XYZ's post-merger EPSB? Again, a very systematic kind of stuff which is being asked in this regular question. Third part, it's asking about what must be the exchange ratio B for XYZ limiteds that pre and post-merger EPS needs to be same. Again, a very rational understanding which was asked in last question that what should be the exchange ratio for XYZ limited if in case they just want the pre and the post merger thing to remain the same. So are we guys all set and clear with it? Let's move towards the solution part guys. Here I have just expanded the table with two more columns which I just made you understand in my question itself part. So EPS here would be 2. It will be 0 0.4 million divided by 0 0.2 million which comes out to be 2. Here it comes from 0 0.1 million divided by 0 0.1 million it comes out to be 1. If I'll talk about the P ratio here, P I've got which is 25, E I've got which is 2, 25 divided by 2, it comes out to be 12.5. Here it is 12.5 divided by 1 comes out to be 12.5. Part A, simple sorted stuff. Cool guys. Next one, the current market price for ABC Limited if in case the P ratio is 8. Now since they have already provided us the P ratio which is 8 in this question, EPS will be multiplied by P ratio which is 1 multiplied by 8. It comes out to be rupees 8. Now, they want the exchange to happen in this parameter only. So now the exchange ratio in this case would be the MPS of XYZ Limited divided by the MPS of ABC Limited. Since we have just calculated the market price for ABC Limited, which is 8, we'll be ignoring this one because here it's part 2. And the question is directly asking us to presume the PE ratio as 8. So we'll consider this one. 8 divided by 25, which is the market price for XYZ Limited, the exchange ratio will come up to 0.32. So for every one share of XYZ Limited, okay, you'll get 0.32. For every one share of ABC Limited, you'll get 0.32 shares of XYZ Limited. So the number of shares of XYZ Limited available in exchange of ABC Limited, that will be 1 lakh multiplied by 0.32. How do I get this figure of 1 lakh? That was my earlier number of outstanding shares, which is 0.1 million for 
ABC Limited. So that has to be multiplied with the exchange ratio, the one which is updated now. So it comes out to be 32,000. So the post merger EPS for XYZ Limited will be their earnings, their earlier earnings, which is 0 0.4 million plus 0 0.1 million, 4 lakh plus 1 lakh divided by 2 lakh was the number of shares for XYZ Limited plus 0 0.32 lakh, which comes out to be from this one. So your post merger EPS for XYZ Limited will be 2.16. Clear guys, very sorted thing. Wonderful. So now they are asking us that what should be our desired ratio. Okay. Post merger EPS of XYZ Limited, they have provided us that it has to remain the same. Okay. So what was the earlier EPS if I'll talk about that was two in case of XYZ Limited. XYZ Limited company's shareholder want that even after merger, their EPS remains the same. Okay, started with this one. So what should be done in that case? Our total earnings have just become from 4 lakh to 5 lakh. Okay, we have just increased our earnings by adding ABC Limited's earning to XYZ, which is 4 lakh plus 1 lakh. So my earning is totally sorted with this thing, but my earning is going to be 5 lakh. Okay, now if I'll talk about the share thing, I've got shares for XYZ Limited as 2 lakh. Okay, so whatever thing that I need to play around is merely on the part of that is ABC Limited. Okay. ABC Limited's earlier shares were 1 lakh. Okay. I have to multiply it in such a way that my ER gets into such phase that the total post merger EPS of XYZ Limited becomes 2, which is the required one. So, simple stuff, simple mathematics 5 lakh divided by 2 lakh plus ER multiplied by 1 is equal to 2, which is the required phase. So, then my post merger EPS for XYZ Limited will become 0 0.50. Simple stuff guys, 5 lakh divided by 2 plus 0 0.5 lakh, it comes out to be 2. So here in this case, if in case my post merger EPS of XYZ Limited remains 0 0.5, then in that case, my overall post merger of XYZ Limited will become 2. So this is what it's being asked in this question. Basically, it's not post merger EPS of uh, XYZ Limited, it is basically post merger exchange ratio of ABC Limited towards the XYZ Limited share, which is going to be 0 0.5 shares. So I can simply tell you that for every one share of ABC Limited, you will get 0 0.5 shares of XYZ Limited so that you can get your desired exchange post merger EPS of uh, XYZ Limited as two. This is what was asked in the question. This question was asked in May 2012 and the very similar questions are usually being asked in say final paper if I'll talk about. So. That was all with this particular presentation. I just hope that definitely, definitely you guys, you guys will revise your questions because that is something which is extremely important for you guys. Do not forget to revise whatever things I'm making you understand over here. Okay. With this, I'll see you. Thank you from my heart. Okay. If in case you have liked this video, if in case you have found it useful, if in case you found that the kind of relevance for this video is extremely good. So just share with your people around because that is something which is extremely important for all of us. Sharing is caring guys. Stay connected with me. I will see you in my next and the last presentation of the CE final examinations. Till then take care. God bless you all. Sayonara. Bye.